Would you climb Everest with someone you don't trust? Probably not. And that's what he never imagined about his guide, Nils Santesana, a 69-year-old American doctor, for his first ascent to the roof of the world. Cost a lot of time and money, finally, in May 2004, Antezana reached the summit of Everest via the Nepalese road. It had been a long and arduous climb and Nils Antezana had hired an uh, Argentine guy named Gustavo Lisi to help him. But during the descent, Antezana suffered from the onset of cerebral edema and collapsed. Although two Sherpas attempted to revive him, Sherpas and Lisi left the doctor in the snow and continued to the camp. Lizzy, who later claimed to have been their diary, did not inform anyone else at came for of his client's condition. When the climbers reached the ridge the next morning, Antezana was disappeared. From the start, the Bolivian American doctor and the Argentine guide seemed an unlikely couple. Nils Antezana, a lean elderly doctor who planned to climb Everest, was reserved and polite with porties carrying their hundreds of pounds of equipment up the mountain. At 69 years old, he would be the oldest American to reach the top of the world. Nils had been persuaded to hire a strange Argentine guide named Gustavo Lisi, whose only ever expedition ended with a stolen photograph of the summit and a false climb to the summit. His guide raised his tomb for photos his arm around his fellow campers and talking about his climbs in South America and his previous climb to the top of Everest four years earlier in 2000. Other climbers on the mountain knew the story behind Gustavo's previous trip to Everest, but he didn't like to talk about it. Glory and Migma, the two hired Sherpas, would have heard little of his stories. Gustavo didn't speak English and Dory and Migma did not speak Spanish. Nils had to translate all the instruction to the two Sherpa assistants. Although uh, Gustavo was the guide, Dory and Mikba quickly realized that Nils was the man who was paying for everything, and this made him the boss, although he rarely gave them orders. With the doctor, with a quiet voice, it was easy to get along and made fewer demands of them than the Argentine. Witnesses and team members say the group reached the summit of ever just after 10 a.m. on 18 May in 2004. They agree on little else. Dory claims he only climbed 10 hours, which means the team would begin its race to the summit at midnight. When they came out of Camp 4 for the evening on May 17, the weather report gave him favorable conditions for several days. The doctor had climbed slowly. Dory had repeatedly tried to overturn the team, complaining to both the doctor and his guide that they were climbing too slowly to get to the top and back safely, but neither was willing to retire. At the top, the doctor scrambled to the edge of the peak and looking like he was about to jump off. Then Nils took off his oxygen mask and lay down on his back in the snow. More than 45 minutes during which Nils, Gustavo and De Sherpas assistants remained at the top, unusually long time for a team that arrived there late in the morning on a day with unstable weather. The guide was busy talking pictures and videos. He said he had noticed it, a climbing body in such a views danger. Once the team began their descent, however, it was clear that Nils would need the assistance of all three of his teammates to get back. The doctor was bewildered had difficulty seeing and staggering drunk as he walked in, stumbling along the narrow snow ridge. Dorian and Migba stood on either side of him, leading him down nearly. By the time the team had descended 30 meters below the summit, known as the Hillary Step, this had collapsed. Dory pulled a rope from the hair pack and the Sherpas lowered the doctor along the wall. But three hours later, the team had only made it another 100 meters down the mountain to the southern peak. Bernice had nearly fallen off the ridge. Meanwhile, the weather had begun to change seriously and now the wind was making the climbers lost. As the Sherpa clung to the their distressed client, they saw Gustavo walking away from them, 
pointing at Mi'kma and waving him down the mountain with him. But Mi'kma stood still uh, the two Sherpas saw the guy turn and start walking down the mountain with on them. Tori had gotten used to Gustavo running ahead of his teammates, but was shocking that the guy would leave them there, when the life of the man who had paid his way to Everest hung in the balance. Gustavo later claimed that there had been a misunderstanding that Dory had told him to the go ahead to free the ropes from the ice and snow, but Dory denied all this. It was the simple fact that they did not speak the same language. Dory said that Gustavo was soon out of sight a few hundred meters ahead of them. When Dory, Migma and Nis reached the balcony, 400 meters below the peak, the doctor collapsed again. Nis was unconscious most of the time now, and when he recovered, he spoke no sense. They tried to give him water, but he was only useless. Now, they realized that all three of their lives were at stake. Sherpas will take most of the night dragging a climber, and by that time, everyone could succumb to the cold, wind and lack of something to breathe. On the balcony, Dory and Mingma found shelter behind a block of snow and supporting Nis against it. Then Dory said he took the team's last two oxygen tanks from his pack. Although he, Mingma and Gustavo had all run out of oxygen, they did not consider using the employer's remaining two cylinders and, although he was almost certain he would not use them, they left them with him. If Nis recovered, if by some miracle he got back on his feet, he would have no oxygen to descend. The rest is well imaginable. The two Sherpa arrived at Camp 4 exhausted, in the middle of the night. The customer's guide, Gustavo Lisi, was already there. But the shocking fact was that he had made no mention of his client's condition left on the balcony. Only when the rest of the group was informed by the Sherpas, only then, some maintainers who were at Camp 4 returned to help the man. But no trace of Nils and Tezan. He disappeared, he had probably taken a few steps, and then he fallen off a cliff in the dark. The case was one of the first in which the accusation went far beyond the simple negligence of a guy to claim criminal behavior. The American doctor's family had an investigation opening, and Liz's reputation as a guide was ruining forever. According to the testimonies, it is seemed that he returned to South America as guide on the Andes. This story has cast a black way of Everest commercial climbing. Even today, many points of the story are obscure. If you liked the video, subscribe the channel and share. See you at the next story.